In this video, I'd like to go over a basic problem solving strategy that will hopefully be useful to you throughout much of the problems that uh, are presented within this course. I find many times students will read engineering economics problems and really struggle because they don't know where to start. And many of the problems have a lot of information in them. So I'd just like to give you some tips. And if you are stuck on a problem, particularly in a midterm or a final exam, if you've got this kind of procedure to fall back on, it should help you in ultimately getting to a solution for the problem. So I'll, I'll title this um, uh, really problem solving strategy. And the first step in solving an engineering economics problem is really about reading. So read the problem and don't just read it once. Read the problem many times because the problems in engineering economics are very densely packed with information. So it's rare to take out all of the information you need in the first read of a problem. So step one, read the problem. Don't worry too much about what you're going to do. Just try to take in some of the information. The next thing that I like to do uh, after I've read the problem a couple of times is to attempt a cash flow diagram. So a cash flow diagram, and of course I'm, I'm talking about these types of diagrams. And if you remember from the introduction to the course, really this is about making a model a simplified model of what's happening in the engineering economics problem. So a cash flow diagram or trying to draw a cash flow diagram kind of comes out of your interpretation of the question. So that's the second step. Um, third step I'd recommend is try to write down, um, write the variables that you can identify. So uh, for instance, a P, a, a value occurring at, in the present. Uh, an F, an A, what is the interest rate, I, um, what are the number of um, compounding periods, how many periods are there in the problem, um, is there a different um, compounding period to the number of periods that the payments occur. So try to write down any of these types of variables as you understand them now in engineering economics. And um, so you can extract them from the cash flow diagram and from your thorough reading of the problem. The next thing I would suggest you do is identify the, um, uh, any formulas, formulas or tables that you needed to solve for whatever the variable is you're looking for. So it may be that in the problem we're given a, um, an A and we'd like to find a P. So we need to identify the formulas or the tables where we can find the variable that we're looking for. Okay. So um, the next thing I tell students in engineering economics is double check that the value of N, or sometimes it's capital N, that's the number or frequency of um, the periods, right? So maybe number of months, number of years, number of days. Check that the um, N, lowercase or uppercase, and I'll put in quotes here, matches the I. So whatever interest rate you're using, make sure that the interest rate is a monthly interest rate if N is measured in months. Make sure that I is a yearly rate if N is measured in years. So at this point, it is really a really good idea to double check that. And if they don't match, then you have to use some of the skills that we learn in this course to convert 
the eye that you're given in the problem into an eye that matches the number of uh, periods that you'd like to analyze. Um, okay, so the next thing is really do the calculations. So after you've identified all of these, um, do the calcs. And at this point, you can say, well, if I've got an I that is a nice round number, then maybe I can use tables. If I don't, I may have to use formulas. But at this point in the process, really just try and do the calculations. Um, after you do the calculations, um, ask yourself a question. Does the answer make sense? Right? So look at the question, look at what they're asking, and then ask yourself, does the answer I've come up with, does it actually make sense? And then the last thing, and this is something that's often forgotten, is write down your conclusion. So if the problem asks you, should someone um, invest in option A or invest in option B, the last step of solving the problem is actually um, write down, actually, or actually, let's, let's just say, answer the question. And you may see me uh, sometimes in these videos after we've done all the calculations and we come up with an answer, I will generally write um, some, a statement like, therefore the company should buy um, machine B. This is an important part of the problem and also very important that you do this on an examination. So this is just a very general outline um, to give you an approach to solving engineering economics problems. If you're stuck, you don't know what to do, go back to this video, read this procedure, and try to apply it, and hopefully you'll find it helpful.